Good morning, everyone. I am honored and delighted to be here. I'm actually not that far from you guys. It took me about 20, 25 minutes to get here. So if you all want to come down and visit me sometime, I'd love to entertain you at our facility, actually. I mean that seriously, because we are close by. We have a great restaurant, serves Lancaster County comfort food, and I'm going to show you our corn maze in just a little bit also. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of history about myself, and um, then I'll lead into our actual um, presentation that talks about a grocery store and a restaurant, hard work and fun. And uh, we'll talk more about that later. I'm probably going to talk more about um, some of the ethics that we have and some of the values that we have and some of our vision, mission, and value as much as them about the actual profit loss and all that. But I will tell you right off the bat, before we even get into the history of, of our company, is um, if you're thinking, and I'm, I think most of you guys are like in the business or will be studying business, is that correct? Am I uh, fair to say that? Um, if you're thinking of starting a grocery store and a restaurant, if it is one of the lower margin items when it comes to a uh, business that you can be in. In the grocery store, if you do one cent to the dollar in our industry, and that's pretty much nationwide, you're running a good grocery store. So when I get kids in, in school tours and we sit down and we talk about our business, I get 100 pennies out on the table and I say, okay, when all the bills are paid, when my salary is paid, the electric bill is paid, the insurance bills are paid, how much is left to reinvest in the company or use? It's a penny. Okay, so it's really a tight margin industry. That's for the, that's for the grocery store. Now, the restaurant is a little better than that. We have a 200-seat uh, restaurant, and uh, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you like Scrapple and Lancaster County favorites, uh, you have to come down. I'd be happy to give you uh, a good breakfast buffet on a Saturday or Sunday, and you can actually uh, check that out uh, at our facility. But that margin there is usually three to five cents uh, on, on the bottom line after all the bills are paid. So it's competitive. It's got to be done right. There's not a lot of room for error. So believe me, when we do uh, planning and we do long-term planning, strategic planning, we have to make sure that we, we spend our money wisely and uh, it's just the nature of our business. <clears throat> now, a little bit of history about myself. I am number nine of 10 children. And most people look at that and they either cry and burst into tears saying, oh my God, what it's like to be that part of a big family. It's actually really kind of fun. Uh, there's two generations in our family, the same mom and dad and all of them. My youngest brother is 55. My oldest brother is 75, so they're 20 years apart. And my parents raised their kids on a farm and uh, they were living down in the little town of Farmersville and they decided that they want to move up to the little town of Oregon. That's why we got the name Oregon Dairy. If you look on the map, it actually is a small town in Oregon. There's no post office there. It's a very small town. So my dad moved there in 1952 and that's where he raised uh, the, the 10 of us kids. I was actually born in Oregon um, in, in the farmhouse there with my siblings. So we had lots and lots of sibling rivalry growing up. I have to say, if you're an only child, that's great. If you have siblings, that's great. When you have nine siblings, it's really great because we really did have a lot of fun in the farm. And being raised in a farm environment was really unique because you get so many opportunities to do things that most of you probably never had a chance to do. That's swim in a big farm pond. Uh, when the ice is frozen in the pond, you have ice skate on there, then you take a VW on there, and you have races on the ice with cars. So we did a lot of those things that probably some of you will never get a chance to do, but it was really a fun environment growing up. And one thing my parents did an awesome job with, and uh, they left us fight. Obviously, most of you that do have siblings know there's sibling rivalry. But one thing my parents, they never said we may fight or we may, you know, tussle. But what I really respect about the most, when we were done with that, we had to get, you know, shake hands or do whatever and get back, go outside and work together and, and get over it. And I think I'm still at 59, I'm learning still to do that. Now it's in a different setting. It's with uh, my older brothers now that are, I uh, happen to be the boss of, of two of my brothers and one is older and one is younger than me. So I have that challenge and that uh, balancing act of being a brother and being a boss. Uh, but I want to move into the uh, presentation now uh, and talk a little bit more specifically about our, uh, about our, uh, our company. That's the front of our building um, as taken a picture a couple weeks ago. It's a supermarket when you look down uh, toward the, whoops, not what I wanted to hit, let me go back. 
Uh, down to the far left of that is the, our restaurant entrance is down there. Uh, so if you ever come to our business uh, and track me down, you would come to the supermarket and then the restaurant is uh, adjoining that. And it's a 200 seat restaurant. We serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we have a, um, a, a great menu with lots of fun items that, that uh, some people like in Lancaster County. And like I said, some people don't like. If you ever never heard of Scrapple, come out and give you a sample of Scrapple. It's, it's, a, fun, it's a fun commodity. I'm going to talk pretty much about this today because I really believe that the foundation of why we're successful is because we have a vision, mission, and value statement. Uh, our mission statement is to create an extraordinary experience. And we try and do that in every way we can in the supermarket, in the restaurant. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of our agritainment, which we do a lot of now, which is agriculture and entertainment combined. We call it agritainment. And uh, that's our goal. When someone walks in the door with an application to, to work at Oregon Dairy, th before they even uh, get their job description, they get a copy of this. Because I want them to understand they work for us. This is what we do. This is what we believe. This is, we kind of call this our company Bible. And this is what we want to try and live by. So our mission statement is to create an extraordinary experience for the customers. I don't care if you came in to shop, uh, if you came in to eat, if you came in to uh, get something in our gift shop. We want every person to um, have a great experience when they, when they come through our doors. Our values, we will treat each other as uh, we would like to be treated by. For some of you, that's old hat. Some of you might have heard that growing up as maybe the golden rule. Um, and if I can throw one little thing into you, I'm going to call you kids because my kids are older than probably most of you in this room. But if there's anything you do in your life that you can't go wrong with is decide at a young age to live by the golden rule. You can't go wrong with doing that in your neighborhood, in your dorm, in your uh, family. Uh, it really, you know, treating others like they'd like to be treated really does apply to business. And it applies to our principles that, that we believe in as a company. So we stress that very, very much. Living uh, with integrity in word and action. Um, we have this, you know, if you're not gonna say it, right to your face, don't say it behind my back. I mean, if we really stress that with our management team. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a awards ceremony where we have several employees that work with us over 35 years. So we're kind of proud of that because we know people like to work with us, they like to work for us. And I really would rather say with us because uh, we consider ourselves a very healthy team and uh, that's what we do. The second bullet there is providing a safe and fun environment for our customers and associates and suppliers. That one there is, um, some people think, why would you throw the word fun in there if you're trying to get something done? Well, I've, I'm a firm believer that if you're not having fun when you're working, you're probably not going to be as effective when you work. Uh, and I, I believe that. I don't know how many of you guys ever had your first job at 15, 16 years old, and it was stressful. You didn't have fun. We really encourage our staff to have fun. On this past Sunday morning was a crazy morning in a restaurant. I could sense it was a little bit crazy, so I walked through the kitchen and I just said, hey guys and gals, how's it going? I said, have you lost your sense of humor yet? Uh, and the reason I said this is because I, I, I really try and live that out myself and say, look, the last thing you lose, that you lose when you're stressed out is your sense of humor. Because uh, having a good sense of humor, being able to laugh at yourself and being able to work together uh, goes a long way. I, I really believe there's a lot of productivity that happens when you're having fun. And of course, having a safe place to be uh, for our customers, associates, and our suppliers. And suppliers are the people that we buy things from. And you know, I really firmly believe that I will get a much better cooperation from the, my suppliers if they know I'm treating them with respect and integrity. And I'm also having fun with them when they call on the phone and ask for the order that they want to place with us that day. So that's our values. Our vision is to enhance the lifestyle of our community by integrating the interests of our family, employees, customers, and community. And I, I can't stress the importance of that. If you ever start your own business and you don't integrate with the community and you don't look for ways to get back to the community, you're missing a tremendous opportunity uh, to serve the community. How do we do that? And I'm going to just talk about a couple of simple things that we do. Every Saturday, in our carport that you saw a picture of at the beginning, uh, we have carport fundraisers where people, an organization calls and says, you know what, we want to earn some money, can we do it in your property? So we get out a grill, 
we get out the hot dogs, we get out the hamburgers, and from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, they come out and they cook hamburgers and hot dogs, they sell them to the consumer, and they take that money and they use it for their organization. Now, how does that how does that integrate with the community? Well, we provide the place, we provide the labor, set them up, and we give them an opportunity to be successful in their nonprofit organizations. I should have 72 Saturdays a year rather than 52 because people love to come out and do that and have fun while they're flipping burgers and hot dogs and they're raising money and they're meeting people and it, it, it's, it's just a great little simple way to do. Another way we do it, we encourage our staff to be very involved in the community. We had a gal that uh, was a hospice volunteer for probably 15 years, was, was the lead volunteer and, and lead counselor there. She just did it her own. And we worked around her schedule to make sure that, that Kathy got off in time to go meet her, uh, fulfill her needs uh, at that uh, organization called Hospice, which most of us here are probably aware of. Another thing we do is we have another guy that is uh, one of the managers, and he's also a, a basketball, I'm sorry, a baseball coach. So come uh, March, April, and May, he comes in in the morning, we work around his schedule, he works till 2 o'clock rather than 5 o'clock, and he coaches baseball. Why do I do that? Why do I inconvenience other people? Because I think Mike is a darn good coach for number one. And number two, I think it's important that Mike has a chance to go out there and, and, and use his talent another way other than just working at Oregon Dairy in the produce department. So learn to be flexible if you're thinking of starting a business with the people that you have employed with you. They, they love that. With customers, um, I know a lot of customers by name, and we have a gold card, um, which is a loyalty card. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, that's another way we keep, keep uh, our, ourselves in tune with what the customer wants and what they like. Leading a profitable business that pursues opportunities to grow, um, that's kind of a no-brainer. We like, do we have to put that in there? Yeah, it's gonna be in there, because we think it's important that people know that new people know, but teenagers know, that when they work here, we have to be profitable in order for them to get their paychecks. We have to be profitable for us to be able to expand our brand, expand our facility, uh, and, and be up to date with things. So that's um, something that we obviously live very passionately by. And then enforce an understanding of food and food production through education and agritainment. I talked a little about the agritainment a little bit ago. And I want to talk a little about that more now. We do a lot of school, school tours throughout the year when, when school's in session. Uh, they'll call and say, hey, we want to come out and see the farm and see the store. So for an hour and a half, these kids come out, they come to the store, they get off their bus, they take the little butts and they sit them in a wagon and the tractor and they take them down to the barn. They drive them through the barn and while they're driving through the barn, they're holding their nose saying, ooh, Cows stink, and so we educate them about that, and, and it really uh, ends up being a very positive experience where kids, uh, young kids, and these kids range from preschool to eighth grade, and we're trying to grow that more to, to teach more adults about uh, farming also and agriculture. So that's something we uh, try hard to do. And then in June, we have um, an event called Family Farm Days. And if you ever want to go on our website and check us out, go into OregonDairy.com and you can see all the crazy things that we do. We're, we're not your conventional supermarket that all we do is sell bread and meat. We do a lot of other extracurricular activities that we think are fun. We have a playground outside that families bring their kids out to and play. And this, week, this year, we spent $5,000 on a jump pad. And this jump pad is a big, you know, it's, it's about uh, 12 by 12, and we blow it up with air, and the kids jump on it, and their moms and dads, and they have fun. Why do we do that? Because we have space to do it in our, in our property, and it's a place to bring families together where moms and dads and kids can come out together. Because we're a family business, and we want to give them as many opportunities as they can have to enjoy the environment of the farm and the family business. So that's why we do uh, those kind of crazy things. Back to integrating interests of our family. Um, because we're a family business, we, we really get to know our employees on a very personal level. And for some of you, this may mean nothing, but I hope someday in your life, you'll wrap your arms around it and you'll make it part of your lifestyle also. Um, but this past Saturday, I had the, the pleasure of speaking at one of our employees' uh, funeral who was with us for 20 years. Okay, Margie was a great cashier. She was my favorite. I, I said if, if all the cashiers would have been like Margie, I probably wouldn't have lost some of my hair because she was just really a good cashier. So 
it's times like that where you, when, when families ask you to be involved in that way, you look back and say, you know, life is more than just about making money. We have to be making money and successful to be profitable. But go beyond that um, and start that young. You, can, you don't have to wait to you're in, in your uh, 20s, 30s, or 40s to do that. Start that at a very young age that you learn to genuinely care about people and their needs and where they're at in life. Uh, because uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's what we did uh, in people's lives that's going to impact uh, our community and, and the people around us. As you notice, I talk fast, and I'm going to give a Q&A at the end of the time, but if there's something that I say that you need clarification on, I'm not offended if you raise your hand and say, look, can I just have you expand on that? I'm, I'm uh, very informal. I'm, I'm more than happy to, uh, to ask and answer questions as I go. Okay, if you look at the uh, org, we call this an org chart um, of our company. You see the top there is the Oregon Dairy Board. Kervin, Willie, George, Victor, those are four brothers. Um, I am, they're kind of my boss in a way, but when it comes down to daily operations, why they, uh, they have to listen on me. I, I, I'm the final decision maker sometimes, and believe me, when there's brothers that are older than you and you become their boss, that does create a certain dynamic sometimes that we have to work through, sit down and talk out, but it's all good. I enjoy doing it. And then if you uh, go under there in the left-hand side, you see the leadership team. Uh, and the, the, the one person on the leadership team is Jim Hensel. He takes care of all the parish departments in the store, the meat, deli, uh, produce, seafood, bakery, and the garden department. And we have the names of those managers on there. So he kind of, that's kind of his, his territory, what he does on a daily basis, uh, keep those departments uh, flowing smoothly. Then the, the next department is the non perishable manager, which is my brother Willie. He takes care of grocery, dairy, frozen, and we have a gift shop there also. And uh, Kay in the gift shop happens to be his wife. So husband, wife teams, we can talk about that another day. That's a whole other session, how you do family business when you have spouses involved. Then, then my brother Vic's in charge of agritainment. Um, he does the maintenance of the property and the equipment in the, the store this morning. He was out there uh, working on our, our, our vacuum that we use to, to sweep up leaves. And he keeps the, the uh, property in tip top shape. And he works on a master plan. We have some plans for expansion down the road. He takes care of that and then oversees our, our maintenance department and milk and drink department. Um, we have a herd of about a thousand cows that my brother George and his family take care of. And uh, he helps oversee that part of our, of our uh, company because we do process, when I say process, we homogenize and pasteurize our own milk there and uh, sell it in right in our store. So we have farm fresh milk at Oregon Dairy, I can guarantee you that. But the farm is owned by a separate entity. That's, I'm not an owner of that. My brother George and his kids actually take over the farm. Then we have a marketing manager, Nancy. She takes care of our advertising budget, special events. She's out today gathering up things for our corn maze. Um, she leads our marketing team and also oversees our safety committee that we have uh, for our, our facility. Uh, then I'm the store manager, Curve, and I am take care of the manager and duties. I left today. I had to find someone to cover for any kind of questions that come up uh, while I'm out today. Uh, I uh, oversee human resources. I oversee payroll, accounts payable, receivable, and uh, the front end staff, which is about 125 people that operate uh, in the supermarket that are, are cashiers, baggers, and all kinds of uh, other fun positions they have uh, when they work at Oregon Dairy as, as a front end staff. Then we have a restaurant manager uh, who oversees our salads and, and uh, front of the house restaurant, oversees the back of the house, which has their own managers, our ice cream shop, and by the way, I'm going to put a little plug in it for ice cream. It's really good. It's like 14% butterfat, and the milk from our cows goes to a local place that actually makes our ice cream from our cream. So I'd be happy to give you a dip of that if you show up, and and, uh, and I'll give you a dip of ice cream also. And then also he oversees the uh, the deck and the playground. We have a huge playground um, that people. I talked about the jump pad. Uh, we have a huge playground out there for kids to come out to go sliding boards, and so they come eat, eat ice cream and they they hang out out on the deck and uh, have a good time out there. In the summertime, we have Friday night on the deck uh, every second Friday night where they get a musician and they they gig around out in the deck and they take a break and eat ice cream and the kids are out having a good time in the playground. So it's all part of what we think uh, we can do in our, our property that sets us apart from what other retailers do that just sell groceries and, uh, and meat. 
Okay, you see the pie there. Um, looks like a big pie. If you add all those numbers together, uh, you wonder how big our business is. It's about $23 million in annual sales. Okay, that's kind of what all those these departments add together. The top one there is the agritainment, and you see the one sixteen one hundred sixteen thousand dollars. That's a number from last year. This year, that number is probably going to go up to like one hundred seventy thousand dollars. That's a big increase, and that's the part I'll show you a slide of that later on of what that all entails with what all falls under agritainment. Then you just go around the whole the the whole uh, corner there, milk and drinks. That's four hundred sixty-two thousand. Bulk foods, which we're very high in that. That's about two percent of our sales. Uh, those are if you guys go to places where you can buy gummy bears, you can buy stuff that we package. We have a phenomenal girl that does a great job in our bulk food department, and that actually translates into about two to two and a half percent of our total volume. She does a great job. We have a little gift shop there for people to buy things for gifts. Health and beauty care items are seven hundred thirty-one thousand. Our bakery. Uh, we did a little million dollars over there. Our bakery, um, if you're from Lancaster County and you get the Lancaster paper, we got the award for the Reader's Choice of Award in birthday cakes and wedding cakes. Uh, we have a phenomenal group of decorators. If any of you ever get married and want a good deal on a cake, our girls will decorate you a wedding cake that'll blow your socks off because they're very talented, they're very good. We actually have to turn wedding cakes away. We can only do so many wedding cakes a weekend because you have to deliver them, set them up and all that. So we're at the point now where we uh, have to sometimes turn weddings away. The only thing is that helped us out, not everyone's getting married on Saturdays anymore, which we really like. We have a lot of Friday night weddings, a lot of Sunday weddings now, so we can kind of uh, expand our times to deliver cakes and, and set them up. But it's a great, uh, great bakery. Frozen food, um, frozen and dairy, uh, you see those two side by side there. Those are the two areas, we call them center store and grocery, which is the six million. They're the, they're the ones that haven't been growing in sales in the last number of years. And most of that is because um, everyone sells those type of things. And you can go to Walmart, you can go anywhere, and, and you can buy that kind of stuff. So um, that's hard to grow those sales, but our departments that we call our perishable part, which is uh, meat, seafood, produce, deli, those departments are the ones that grow in sales because we think we do an outstanding job with, with that. So that kind of gets you, I'm not going to go around the whole thing that you guys can read that and see that, but that's kind of how it's, it's broken up with uh, percent of sales and, and uh, where it all goes to. This I pulled from, uh, we're members of NGA, which stands for National Grocery Association. So this is just a stat from what uh, retailers uh, are up against with competition. So if you look down over, you can see that 80.5% uh, of the stores in the survey have a Walmart Supercenter in their direct market area. And we got two of them, okay? And we got Wegmans coming to town. How many know of Wegmans? Anybody in here know what? Ah. Okay, good. They're a great organization. They're, they run a really, a really good, and they're coming to Lancaster. So we have more competition coming to Lancaster. So we have to differentiate ourselves to make sure that we can compete against Wegmans. Because most of you that probably know about Wegmans know how good they are, how clean their stores are, how big they are. Just, just for the record, their new store will be 120,000 square feet. Now that's hard to visualize uh, for, for all of you to see it. That's a huge store. The average supermarket is usually between 30 and 35,000 square feet. So they're basically four times larger than what the average supermarket is in the US. So they build big stores. They have to do over a million dollars in sales, million and a half to even break even. And we're running between uh, about 400,000. So you know they have to acquire a lot of volume. So when they move in here, they're gonna go after volume because in order for them to survive, they're gonna have to do a lot of volume. But they're, I would never say anything bad about that organization because they're very well run and they're, it's another family business and they do a really great job. Uh, so you see the super centers are 4.4, uh, what, they, what they call the competition. Other conventional supermarkets in our area, we have Weiss, Giant, and um, their competitors. And then we have our, uh, we have a group of stores called Family Owned Markets. That's uh, 11 stores that we band together and do our advertising together. So if you ever watch Channel Wait and see closed caption is brought to you by, that's the group of stores that we're part of. Family and markets. It would be Darren Camps. Anyone ever heard of Darren Camps? They want to have an E-Town? That's part of our ad group. They're a family business. Great, 
great organization. So we have 11 stores that we work together because we can compete a little bit more against the chain stores when we put our resources together and uh, use some of the synergies for advertising and buying power. So uh, that helps us out a lot. Then other assortment stores, uh, gourmet and specialty, and then other formats, you can see the list of items there that are there. I mean, there was never a time where drugstores sold uh, groceries. Well, they sell groceries, now they have milk, and, and everyone's getting a little piece of the pie. So it makes us as retailers be sharp, find our niche, and find out what we're good at, and, and do it well. Social media. This is the fun one. Back in the day, we would uh, get a whole page of the local newspaper that had a morning paper, the evening paper in Lancaster area, and we run a full page ad in there, just our store together. We haven't done that in probably 15 years because people don't read the newspaper. How many of you guys read the newspaper? Anybody in the newspaper at all? It's a small percent of the people. So if you want to find out about the news, where do you go? What do you do if you want to find out about the, the balloon that got away down at uh, Aberdeen and headed for Northern PA? How do you find out about that? So what do you guys do? Twitter. Pardon? Twitter. Twitter? What else? Facebook is some, and you can just go online and type CNN and, and, uh, and find out. You were going to say something. Well, like news, apps. news apps. So there's so many different ways. So newspapers really become very, very uh, small in our area. Lancashire newspapers have a morning edition, evening edition. They're down to just a morning edition, a one edition, and, and that continues to, uh, to drop in, in reading. So um, we, if you go onto our website, uh, we actually have an email blast we send out. Um, once a week, if not more, and uh, we have like 12,000 people that we send out information to about Oregon Dairy. It can be about a special promotion we have, it can be about uh, a, a special ad we have coming up, it can be celebrating something, reminding people about the holiday, but uh, that is a, um, a large part of how we communicate with our customers. The other way is through Facebook. Um, we use Facebook an awful lot. We don't use Twitter at this point in time. Our industry has not used Twitter a lot because they haven't found it to be as effective as Facebook is yet. I think that will change because the, the, the social media changes all the time and we're always trying to keep up with the social media. And uh, so we use Facebook a lot and if you want to go on our website, sign up, we'd be happy to send your email blast when we get it. You'll be able to see what's going on on Facebook. And uh, so that's been a, a fun change in our industry in the last number of years. Uh, I talked a little earlier about our gold card. We have a loyalty card that we have. And I'm going to, if you can just spend a moment and just kind of glance over the top part of that, then I'll go down and explain the lower part a little bit more uh, to you. It kind of breaks down uh, the different uh, segments of people and what their buying habits are. Okay, <clears throat> you can obviously see that 4% of the people, when we look at the gold people, they um, do 32% of the spending and they average $156 a week in our grocery store. We love them people. We want more than people because uh, they're, they're, they're our best customers. In a couple weeks, we're going to send out a Christmas card to them. We still use mail occasionally and give them a $10 gift card to use and just thank them for being wonderful customers. Okay, it's part of what we say, you know what, they pay the bills, they hear an awful lot, and we're just gonna bless them with a $10. They don't have to spend 25 bucks to use, they just, it's a thank you for being our valuable customer. Uh, so everyone in that category will get a, uh, a Christmas card from Oregon Dairy, and uh, we're gonna let them spend $10 on us and enjoy their Christmas that way. Then you see the silver category is 20%. Uh, they do 41% of the spending, but they only spend $30 a week. We like them too, by the way. We, we like them all. They're, they're, all part of the, they're all part of the package. Um, and then I missed the end column there. The, the people that are gold people, they come in 3.1 times a week. We see their smiling faces darken our doors. And the people that are silver, they're basically there not quite once a week. Uh, but they also spend a lot of money with us and, and uh, they're great customers. Then you have the bronze. They're 30% uh, of the households, 18% of the spending, and they average $11 a week. Those are 
are cross shoppers. Those are people that maybe work close by, they stop on the way home, they pick up a couple things, but their spouse or significant other does the shopping, they don't shop at our store, and so they, they but they stop and, and buy a couple things here and there. And then the 10 people, 10 people, the people in the 10 category, uh, they're 46% of households, uh, and they're only 9% of the spending, and the average $3.57. And those are the guys that are probably working on a work project, from PennDOT or someone that comes in just gets a couple things and they're a small, a small percent of the people and they only average one-tenth of a, of a time a week. So that's how we kind of break down the, the, the cards. We're really trying hard to uh, do a better job with our card program and, and use it for people that are, the more you spend with us, the more you get. So our marketing director is going to work very hard this coming year to do more promotions for the people that are in the gold category uh, that spend $156 a week because they're the ones that pay the bills and we really like to see them coming back as often as they can. Okay, here's the part of uh, the agritainment component and I'm going to put a little plug in for that. If you like corn mazes and you want to come out and uh, enjoy a corn maze, this maze is called Happy Crows. Okay, if you can Use your imagination, you'll see that in there. But that is uh, joining our property. And uh, the little white barn there in the corner is where people start. And that whole area there is full of, uh, is full of activities for kids to do. We do barrel trains, we do pedal tractors, we have the jump pad there, we have a food trailer there. And uh, you don't see that on the picture because this picture was taken uh, right after my brother cut in the corn. And I, I, I'm gonna brag a little bit about my little brother here. He cuts that in there every year. I'm, I consider myself fairly talented, but if I did a corn maze, it would not turn out like that at all. Uh, this is the first year he did it via GPS. Other years he did it with a, uh, uh, paper and, and, and grids and his daughter uh, walked in front of him. Well, he walked in front of her and they cut it in. And we've had, this is our fifth year of a maze that we had and uh, Today, this weekend is the last weekend for the corn maze. It's actually tonight. We do a flashlight maze. It's funny after dark, by the way. It's a great time to come through, bring your flashlight down. And then it's also on Saturday is the last night because we started in September and we do it through uh, the end of October uh, through uh, Halloween, which is coming up this weekend. So we, we generate a lot of fun. We generate a lot of activity with that. Uh, our goal next year is to promote it more with businesses. They come out there and do team building venues with that and, and see so you can get through it the quickest. And, and you need to, uh, you get a prize if you, there's like eight different stations that you have to find while you're in there. You get a map when you get there and you try and get through there and come out the other end the same night uh, or you're gonna spend the night in a, in a corn maze. We've never had that happen and we don't think it will ever happen. We actually give them a phone number, a cell phone number. If they get lost or get panicky, there is a number they can call and say, guess what, I'm lost. My brother was in a meeting the other day and there was a small group there and, and one of the kids got lost and, and uh, Tui got up there, why they had found their way out and they, uh, they have a good time uh, with that. So uh, again, that's part of the agritainment component of our, of our business. And uh, we, we do a different maze every year and then in June, I, we, I alluded to this earlier, we have an event called Family Farm Days where we open the, our farm up and we get uh, the Lancaster Ag Council to partner with us and we take about 10,000 people on wagons from the store to the barn and they go through the barn and they get out down to the farm. We have a big tent set up there and they get to see different exhibits from agriculture vendors and they get a chance to pet a cow, a calf, uh, see alpacas. So it's a little mini Pennsylvania farm show, but let me emphasize mini because it's not near as big as that, but it's, it's a chance for people to come out and just put their foot on the ground and uh, enjoy agriculture and find out about how much water a cow drinks to produce milk. Uh, so there's just a lot of fun facts we have. We have a scavenger hunt there that day. We have New Holland equipment brings out huge combines and they set them there and, and show people uh, how much you have to pay to buy one of those if you were in the market for that. So that's an event we do three days in June. So uh, when you're out of school in, this, in the spring and you want to come out in June and see us, follow our website, uh, we do have a, a very loyal following of people that come out for that. And it's free. We don't charge you to come because uh, we have a lot of volunteers that help with that. The ag community comes together. Um, and my dad was actually the brainchild behind that. He had this philosophy that said, you know, 
There's a lot of people that think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. That is so wrong. We're going to change that. So that was the reason he wanted to open the farm up for people to come out and actually experience a cow, see a cow being milked. The milk, you see the milk, if you're there at the right time of the day, you can actually see cows being milked and they have a milking part of it that, that uh, milks 24 cows at a time. So it's a phenomenal agriculture opportunity for people to come out and learn about uh, what it's like to live on the farm and be in the farm and, and enjoy the, the great smell of the farm and all. So what I have to say, I, I was raised in the farm and the cows were, were fun, but nowadays the cows are even cared for in a much greater way. Animal husbandry, I think in America, has improved uh, tremendously in the last 10 or 15 years. Like, when the, when the temperature gets to be 80 degrees, these fans kick on automatically and the cows get a breeze. Okay, because the fans are running so the flies can't sit on them. Uh, when it gets five degrees higher, the water turns on and there's a sprinkler in there for the cows because they get uh, a chance to, uh, to uh, cool down with, with uh, cool water when they're, when they're in, their, in their milking uh, parlor. So um, anyway, that's our corn maze for this year. If you want to come out and enjoy it, you have to come out in the next uh, 48 hours because it's Saturday night at uh, 10 o'clock uh, we have completed. And we will probably have had, um, I think it's going to be 12,000 people go through that. And we're doing a pumpkin patch tomorrow, yet we had to throw an extra day in there because we were running out of pumpkins all the time where you can come hop in a wagon, go out to the field. We don't raise the pumpkins there. We support the local farmers in Lancaster County and we buy the pumpkins from them. We take them out in the field, we drop them there. Kids come, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, hop in a wagon, go out and pick a pumpkin, bring it into the barn. And after you pay for the pumpkin, you don't have to pay to decorate it. You can, you know, put the little facey things on it and all the little frilly uh, uh, things on to make it uh, a fun thing for the kids to do. So we really enjoy seeing that happen in our facility because we often have three generations, sometimes four, coming out, just take a wagon ride, go pick a pumpkin. We also have a pumpkin chucker. I should have put a picture into that. Uh, that's a pumpkin. Uh, it's, it, it actually throws pumpkins about, um, I think it's... 4,000 yard, uh, close to a quarter of a mile, where you put it in and you buy a $5 pumpkin and then you can pull the trigger and this thing shoots. And if you get in a certain area in the field, they give you a free half gallon of chocolate milk uh, if you can really hit the, uh, the center. You really can't do much about hitting the center. You just have to make sure the winds are blowing the right or wrong way to get it there. But it's a lot of fun. People love the pumpkin chucker. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Uh, something that's happening uh, that we're just, right now, if you look on our website, uh, we have in our logo, it says more than just milk. Uh, we're changing that a bit in the next year. Our, our, our new initiative we're going to have this coming year is um, to change that up a bit. We're going to have the Oregon Dairy, uh, the generic on the left-hand side where it says farm fresh and family fun um, because we really want to be different than just a supermarket. That's why we want to throw fun in there and throw family in there. And there will be the market at Oregon Dairy, which is on the left uh, there, the lower one, and that refers to our supermarket, um, that people can come and, and it's farm fresh and it's family fun. And the next category is the farmstead, which is the place you'll come to for agritainment and do the fun things you do out in the fields. And uh, so we'll, we'll use all these different logos and, and uh, advertising depending on what we're advertising we use the different logos and then we also have the restaurant uh, at Oregon Dairy also so the theme will stay the same farm fresh family fun but we'll we, we have the farm we have the restaurant we have the market and then there's times we'll just use the farm fresh family fun a uh, logo and that's something that you guys have found out before my staff found out about it so don't post it on facebook because i do want my staff to find out about it first we just got these approved a couple uh, uh last week and we haven't rolled it out to our employees yet they know we're working on it but so i'm sharing you something that is is uh not been out to our staff yet at this at this point but we're excited about that because we think it, it'll, it'll, again, set us apart and give us a chance to uh, differentiate ourselves from our competition and uh, let people know that when they come to Oregon Dairy, there's all kinds of options they have when they come to Oregon Dairy. I spoke earlier about the farm and, and how they take care of the cows and, and uh, that picture you see there, my brother's in the middle there with his wife, Jean. 
The big dude beside him is Chad, my nephew, and that's his wife and kids uh, there uh, to my right. And then on the other side is my niece, Maria, and her husband, Tim, and their three kids. And those three kids are the ones that are over there feeding the calf. Um, again, this is apart from Morgan Dairy Supermarket and Restaurant. It's a separate LLC, but my brother George, who is an owner of the store, is also an owner of the farm. Uh, my dad sold a portion of the farm to him because he was the only one out of, out of uh, 10 kids that wanted the farm. God bless him. I'm so glad he wanted to do that because I sure was tired of milking cows at that point. So my brother George and his family have uh, taken the baton and do a great job. And they received the uh, Outstanding Farm uh, Sustainability Award this past year uh, across the U.S. So they received an award for that. And working very hard in the farm to fork experience, uh, like I said, the milk that we produce from the farm, by the time it comes up to us, it could be, we homogenize the pasture, it could be just within a couple hours from the time it leaves the cow till we actually process it. So we talk about farm fresh milk, I can look you right in the eye and say, look, this is farm fresh milk because it came right from the farm on a truck up at the store and we homogenize and pasteurize it there. Uh, another initiative they uh, are working, you see the Keeping Chesapeake Bay Clean. Um, farmers in our area have done a phenomenal job in the last couple years to, to do their part in making that happen. Uh, I joke with my employees, every new employee that starts has to hop in a wagon and take a farm tour to get the history of our company. So when I do that, I, I joke when I go down the, the hill and we cross the stream, and the stream has a wide out either side, there's, there's grass and there's uh, all kinds of uh, plants there. And it, my dad would say, get the darn mower out and mow that down because it looks awful. Because when he was around, he mowed everything right up to, the, up to the stream and it was really nice and clean, which was great. But the, the plants that we have there now are a filtering system. Uh, it's great for animal habitat and also helps drain uh, dirt and pollution that's getting into the stream. Because the little stream that runs through our property goes down to the Conestoga, the Conestoga goes into the Susquehanna, the Susquehanna goes down to the Chesapeake Bay. So farmers are really working hard at, at doing their job and helping to get that cleaned up because they've taken a lot of abuse from it. A little more than they probably should have because there's other reasons the Chesapeake Bay has gone amok. It's just not all farmers. Uh, we residential people do the same thing. But uh, they really have worked hard at, at keeping that clean. They don't let cows stop and stand in the stream and do their thing, go to the bathroom. That, that, they don't, that doesn't happen anymore. They put fences up so cows can't do that. So there's a lot of initiative that farmers are doing to help keep uh, the, the Chesapeake Bay clean. And it, it takes extra work, it takes um, extra time sometime, but when it becomes part of your lifestyle, uh, it's just like eating healthy. You just do it because that's what you believe and that's what you want to do. So uh, the farm, like I said, they're, they're a, uh, obviously a seven-day operation also. They milk three times a day and uh, they do a, a great job in, uh, in uh, milking 500 cows and uh, if you really, and when I said at the beginning, and because I'm about to wrap it up, my, my timer is going to go off here shortly. Uh, I would be really delighted to take any of you sometime uh, on on a, on a tour of the farm, of the composting facility. The farm actually takes manure from the cows, turns it into methane gas, and all the electricity on the farm is uh, is from cow manure. So we have this little joke going on. We we want a bumper sticker that says something other than bit happens to make people know that we uh, we do make electricity out of our manure uh, and we're very proud of that and they actually sell some of the electricity from the farm to the store then because they create more generate more electricity than they can actually use down on the farm so uh, they're very proud of, of, of that to be able to use that resource they also all the compost all the uh, Trimmings we have from the store, leftover food to people that don't eat all their food. We, we compost that, that goes down to the farm in a compost pile. They turn that in and they rework it. By the time it's done, it's sold to golf courses and, and people that do uh, turf work. And so we, we really try hard in our facility, in the store, the restaurant farm, to make sure we're doing our share in recycling and uh, using the resources we're given in a very, in a very proper way. My timer has just beeped, so my 45 minutes is, is here. So I'm going to open it up for Q&A and any questions that anyone has uh, because I think we're pretty much through.
through the uh, slide presentation. I just want to flip back to and end with what I started with. I want you to do this personally. I want you to create your own, your own mission statement, your own value statement, your own goal that you have for yourself, okay? Uh, I, I just believe in it. I think you probably have been taught that here in school, but if you don't take the time to do that, that is your rudder for your life, and that will give you some clear direction for your life if you take the time to sit down and, uh, and just do that for yourself. And it, it's just not all about what you're going to do as a career. Some of you are going to be engineers, accountants. Lord knows what you're going to end up being, but you all have such great potential, and I just really want to encourage you to... Uh, Take the time and, and, and do your mission statement. Do your, what do you believe in? And don't compromise that then. I don't, we all come from different backgrounds and we all have different things that we were taught. And now you're at the age now where your parents just cut you loose and cut the bill of course and said, you know what, you're on your own and go figure it out. And as you figure it out, make some goals that you'll set for your life and then live by them. You can't go wrong by setting goals and setting standards that you'll never regret. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, you said you're having like, um, more competition come around, like yes. Wegman. Are you going to change any of your strategic plans? Like you said, a lot of things are focused around family. Right. Are you going to keep that as a core value just because it is a core value, or are you going to have to change that because yeah. of the competition? Good question. We, at this point in time, we believe our core values are not going to change a whole lot. We're probably going to put a little bit more emphasis on uh, the things that we can do in our property that you can't do at Wegmans, which is the agritainment part of it, where you can bring your families and do that kind of stuff. We probably won't put as much emphasis on having Bounty Town sale for 99 cents and, and, and try it. We need to still do that. But I don't see our core values changing a whole lot with Wegmans coming to town because we, we, think we, can, we think we've started already differentiating ourselves with our current competition and Wegmans will just make us a little bit sharper, hopefully. Good question. Another question. Yes, you. Um, so since you're a family business, how do you, what are your plans for when you retire? You sound like my wife. When are you going to retire? <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. We actually uh, are working with an organization now called uh, the North Group, and because we have some some of our kids uh, have an interest in in the company, and so we're we're actually starting that process right now. My youngest brother, who's an owner, is 55, so he's really not thinking about retirement too much. I'm 59. He's like. I'm not really thinking about it, but I need to prep that generation. We feel we're a little bit on behind with that. We actually come here to E-Town because they have a family business forum that started by the High Center, and we're involved with that, and they help us with that. So we're going to really start being intentional about get, getting that baton and having our kids catch the vision of, of what the next generation's uh, going to do. And it's just not going to be kids. It's going to be other people. We have tried really hard with being a family business, and, and with the owners, the current four owners right now, there's 17 next-gen people that could take over the business. We don't want that many to do it, to be honest with you. There's not enough room for 17 people, but uh, we're, we're going to pick those people, some of them that work here that show an interest in it. But we also are very intentional about the employees that work with us for 30 years, that their last name is in Hearst. They have a good opportunity to work at our company. They, we want them to have the same, same opportunities and the same chances. Just because your name is Hearst does not mean you're going to get to the position where I am today. You're going to have to. You're going to have to work it there, and you have to show you can do it. Good question. Any other questions? You said uh, you grew up on a farm in a farmhouse. Um, mm -hmm. I'm from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Also grew up on a farm. Mm -hmm. Came here for a business. And um, I was wondering what else you might have done besides dairy. On the farm. Okay. Uh, what we did beside dairy in the farm and. And I, I, I'm really reluctant to say this because some of you will think, I can't believe you did that. We actually raised 35 acres of tobacco. Okay, we, we, we worked really, really hard. And I have to just tell you a quick little story about that. My father and mother were very, very conservative Mennonites. Okay? And uh, back in the day, that was okay to do that. The, the church that they would be a part of, not they'd be alive, no longer allows you to be a member of the church if you raise tobacco. But back in the day, I raised 35 acres of it, and we worked our butts off. Um, but it was a good thing. I mean, it taught me how to work. It taught me how to how to uh, be committed to uh, daily chores, and, and, and you don't stop because you don't feel like you just get her done. It's pretty much what we had to do. Any other questions? Can you um, explain to me how you 
explain more about the 11 stores that you guys are Okay. Yeah, I will do that. The 11 stores that we're a member of is called Family Owned Markets. If you go on the website and look under Family Owned Markets, you'll see uh, Darren Camps, which has four stores. Yoder's Market has one store. Oregon Dairy has one store. Hers Market has one store. Musters has three stores. So we together um, meet every two weeks and we discuss strategy. We discuss, we have an ad manager that helps set our ad together. So when you see a commercial on TV and um, it says family owned markets, those are those stores together and, and I wouldn't be able to pay for that commercial myself. When I split it up with 11 other stores, I can afford it. So we use those synergies in advertising and buying and it has really worked really well. And I, I look at, do we compete a bit? We really do, but we're, we're competing against the big guys. So we sit together and share ideas and we feel that we're much better equipped to compete against the, the, the Walmarts and the Giants if we work together and put our resources together. But then each store has their own niche that they do that sets them apart also. Like most of the stores came to Agritain because they're not on the farm. So that kind of sets us apart. Um, Darren Kemp's does some unique things that sets them apart. So we all, they all kind of have their own niche, but collectively we work together as a group and put our synergy together. So instead of me getting a thousand dollar bill for uh, advertising, uh, I take a set, an 11th of that, so it makes that expense a lot less for me. Okay? Yeah, but you can go to the website, familyandmarkets.com, and uh, you'll see our logo on there also. Any other questions? Any other locations to expand, or are you just gonna do the one site? That's really it. That's in our strategic plan. We, we say the next generation is going to help us deal with that. Right now, we have a lot that we can do on our facility there. So we're not really looking at a lot of other um, opportunities, especially for the supermarket. We work for the restaurant, but there wasn't, when you do the cash flow for a family restaurant, it's really, in Lancaster County, the family restaurants have fallen off pretty fast. So um, we have kind of sit back a little bit and decided we're going to focus on our facility there. We have several hundred acres that we can do things with, and we're considering putting gardens on there for people to come out and grow their own vegetables. We're considering put our own Angus beef out there and sell, you know, locally raised Angus beef. The farm to fork is where we see our next niche going that we want to hang our hat on and, and work hard on. So I would say that's the initiative that we're going to work very hard on, even in competing with Wegmans, because uh, that's something we can do. Well, that's how Wegmans started, but I think what you're saying is quality versus quality. <coughs> mm -hmm. Correct. That's, that's correct. With, with good service, a smiling face, the extraordinary experience, we believe in it. Any other questions? I know lunch is looking at you in the face. I know you guys have classes this afternoon. I want to be sensitive to uh, that also. Okay, you guys have been great. Ask some good questions. Good luck in your, your career, at, I mean your, your schoolwork in your time here at Eton College. It's a great uh, school and I'm just glad and honored to be here today. Thank you. Thank you.